Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us. I'm joined by Jeff Berkowitz, and Jeff and I are going to be really focusing on the governor's budget address and state of the state address, which happened yesterday as we record this on February the 3rd. And Jeff, before we start, let's just take a quick look. This is what the governor is saying uh, is his budget proposal. On the right, we had the general funds. That is the portion, ladies and gentlemen, that we normally refer to as the operating budget of the state, that $45.4 billion. And you can see how the uh, breakdown is there. The 20, almost 21% of the state's operating budget goes to pensions. Uh, 21% goes to uh, pre-K-12 education. So, Jeff, we are spending under the governor's proposal almost as, mu almost as much, almost exactly the same amount of money uh, on pensions as we are to educate children. And uh, we can go through those, and we will mm. in time. I trust, Jeff, you had a moment to look at the governor's uh, address. What are your initial takeaways? Well, the initial takeaways, uh, and this is important, federally in November, we will be talking about who's making the big lie, Democrats or Republicans. And we will be talking in November in the state, who's making a big lie, the governor or his opponents, the Democrats or the Republicans. Folks, we're about truth on the show. We're giving you the truth. And we're going to see and assess and judge how much of the truth you get over the next year, over the course of this coming year, from the Democrats and the Republicans about the budget. Did the governor lie? Were the Republicans' rights when they criticize this, when they say, there are no reforms here, this is just smoke and mirrors. So that's what we're doing today. We're starting to sort out the truth from the lie. Well, I don't know. Let's let's not say necessarily a lie. We have two different interpretations. I don't know that we have to say either is lying. We might say uh, both sides tend to spin information in their direction. Along with that, well, let me here's. Go back. Well, I, I want to get ahead, to a sir. clip of the governor here as he's talking. Then we can sure. respond to it. This is one of the things that the Republicans would say the governor is maybe technically telling the truth, but that he is distorting reality. Let's take a listen. After decades of credit downgrades, by the end of my second full fiscal year in office, Illinois received two credit upgrades, the first upgrades the state has received in over 20 years. The massive bill backlog that contained bills past due for as long as 500 days now contains only unpaid general funds bills averaging 15 days old. And that $3.2 billion structural deficit? Well, today I'm pleased to announce Illinois will end this fiscal year with a $1.7 billion surplus, the first of its kind in more than 25 years. So $1.7 billion surplus in the budget According to the governor, he wanted to take uh, credit for that. Uh, but, you know, the Republicans, and we'll hear from some sound bites from the Republicans. But that's one of the big areas where the Republicans are saying the governor is taking credit for things that he really hasn't done structurally to change the problems that have been plaguing the budget for years. Well, yes, he's talking about upgrades. We all know he, does, he didn't do a thing to warrant him taking credit for upgrades. You could maybe thank uh, the federal government, which included um, the money that came into the state of Illinois, these big spending of the federal government. A lot of that happened under Trump in, the, in 2020 related to COVID. And then a lot more happened under Biden in 2021 related to COVID. And then Biden wants to do even more. He Jeff, uh, our friends at Wirepoints. Excuse me. Go ahead. Excuse me. They spent six trillion dollars already. They being the federal government, and boy, did Illinois get its share of that. Well, and, and that's why I want to say. Let me let me bring in for the audience here. This is our friends at Wirepoints put this together for us, uh, running down that 
The governor can claim, they would say, the Republicans would say, that he has a surplus, but that's because we got $186 billion in federal aid and stimulus money, mostly due to the uh, COVID relief. Uh, and, of course, so much of that money, uh, trillions of dollars were being spent at the federal level. So uh, right. what is your... Well, let's look at why the big you, numbers. We, we might come to this, the by big... the way, a couple of times, folks. There's a lot of information, but go ahead, Jeff. Give us some insight. So the, the people at home don't have to read this whole thing. Let's just look at the stuff that's in bold. The loan and grant programs, almost, um, what is it, $70 billion dollars. And then we have income support. A lot of that would be unemployment benefits, another $30 billion. We're up to $100 billion. Are you counting, folks? $100 billion. And then we got the local funding of another, uh, what is that, uh, another $30 billion. We're up to $100 billion, especially, and a lot of that's COVID as a subcomponent, $11 billion. Then the direct stimulus, another twenty-five. What is that? Is that what, did I read that right? Well, we got health spending is nine point eight billion. Other spending no, 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 seven point eight. Don't even go there, Terry. Excuse me. Don't even go there. Let's focus people on the left side. Loan and grant program seventy billion. Income support thirty billion. Rounding off here. State and local funding another thirty billion. Direct stimulus checks another thirty billion. That's one hundred and thirty billion right there. You don't have to go to testing and all that other stuff. You pump one hundred and thirty billion dollars into the state of Illinois. And think of that in terms of the income taxes that are going to be paid. Think of individual income taxes, corporate income taxes, sales taxes. That's the revenue for the state of Illinois. Okay? So if people want the truth, Wirepoints puts out the truth here. This is not a carny barker. This is the truth. They total it all up. It's $186 billion. The revenue went up for the state of Illinois because just a year and a half ago, the governor saying, woe is me, we don't have enough revenue, we're going to have more expenditures, we're going to have deficits. And he was projecting revenue for this year of $40 billion. Now he's got $46 billion. Where did it come from, Terry? If you say we shouldn't use the word lie, where did that $46 billion in revenue come from? Because it didn't. Well, you know, we don't want to call people liars. Let's just say sometimes people misinterpret information. How's that? Okay, misinterpret. Let me bring this up. Speaking of uh, the money is coming, this is for, again from the governor's budget book, page 15. And at the lower left, it says federal revenue. Now, this is for 2023. Uh, federal revenue forecast equals f over $4 billion, a reduction of $741 million from fiscal year 2022. And as a reminder to the audience, we are in fiscal year 2022, and it was fiscal year 2022, the governor was bragging that we had a $1.7 billion surplus. But the feds, they're saying in their book that next year, fiscal year 2023, that we are going to have a reduction of $741 million from the current fiscal year uh, due to an estimated end of enhanced Medicaid match after September. So this is just a, a specific example of one of the areas of the funds where because of the lower uh, spending on enhanced Medicaid, uh, and I think, well, again, Terry, tied to COVID, Terry. that that is one area where these these numbers are very out of proportion. This is not your father's budget. You know, the whole COVID thing has had a real impact on budgeting uh, both this year and then again next year. Well, let's take, let's take out a little bit now and remind people of the words they've heard before. So they'll, this will be familiar to them. When we start deconstructing the loans and grants that came from the feds to Illinois of 70 billion, you'll remember PPP, okay? Payback Protection Program, that was 40 billion, I'm rounding off. And and then there's a, another component, disaster loans, 12 billion. Airline industry, remember all the money that came to the airline industry? 18 billion. So again, these are the deconstructing, this is the revenue coming into the state of Illinois, not going that directly to the state of Illinois, but to the people who pay taxes, corporations, individuals, and sales taxes. Income support, remember, we said that was $28 billion. 
Those are the unemployment benefits. Remember how much the Fed was pushing. Keep those unemployment benefits up. Even if we're paying people to more to stay home than to work, let's do it. Thank you very much. Was Brisker supporting it? Yes, he was. Was was Uncle Joe, Joe Biden, giving it to us? Yes, he was. Well, send Uncle Joe. Send Joe Biden a thank you note, okay? But it's, let me round that out. The state and local funding came directly to the state and local governments, 25 billion, you know, going for COVID relief. And then there's direct amount of money going to the state of Illinois. So how can, how can the governor ignore this? Remember he said he's about science. How about the economic science? How science economic and data, Jeff. And data. If he's about data, he should and, be trotting out. And again, right. he, here's the data, right? Right there. Why and and what, look, look at that first that first column, second to last or the last line there. Corona relief fund, four point nine billion dollars. Right. right there. It's throughout. This is all about COVID. This is all about relief money coming. This is way too much. Way more than should have been spent. We're talking just Illinois here, you know, getting these funds, but it's happened throughout the country. Why did we get 7% inflation, the highest rate in 40 years? Thank you very much, federal. Oh, it's the monopolistic practices. And that's what the governor's saying, the monopolistic practices. Again, is that just a misinterpretation, Terry? Or is somebody telling a big lie here? Let me, let me run through a couple of things. We're going to get to the Republicans' criticism, but I want to run through a couple more points that the governor is making. In his plan, he says they got $1 billion in tax and relief. And, of course, this is going to be very important relative to this election year as the governor is running for re-election. So he's wanting to say that I am saving you money on your – we're freezing the tax on groceries, and that's $360 million. We're giving property tax rebates of $475 million, just to run through this quickly. We're going to have license fees waivers, uh, $38 million license fees, and that's – one-year uh, waiver of the license fees on health care workers and liquor license fees. So, uh, and the gas tax suspension. Remember, they doubled the gas tax from 19 cents a gallon to 38 cents a gallon. The governor's saying, hey, it's supposed to go up, a cost of uh, living adjustment of two cents or so. We're going to uh, suspend that, and that'll be $135 million in taxpayer saving. You can take 135 million and divide that through the uh, population of the state. I don't know that it's that significant. And Jeff, before we uh, move on to some of the other things, I want to get one more. Wait, uh, before you some, on, go Terry, ahead. Terry, what? Terry, Terry, let's stay on the topic. Number one, folks, put that slide right back up, okay? Just for a second. The slide you just had. Tax, the grocery tax freeze. In other words, 1% of your paying now, when you go to the grocery store, you may pay other taxes, other things, local things, but you're paying 1% to the state of Illinois for, uh, for your, on the sales tax. So when you buy $100 worth of food, groceries, you get 1% tax, that's a dollar. That's what you get now. If you bought um, this week $100 worth of food, you'll get a dollar off that. You do that 50 weeks, what's your savings from the grocery tax freeze? 50 bucks, folks. The governor's giving you 50 bucks. Just count it. Property tax freeze? Well, some people who own homes may get, depending on the value of their home and their taxes, up to $300 back off their property tax. $300. You may say you're paying, many people are paying $10,000, $12,000, $15,000. What do you get back? A max of $300. Say you don't own a home, you get zero, you get zero. You might say some of that filters down to you if you're a renter, but it ain't gonna be time. This is a one year only program because he's only up for reelection this year. Next year, he's not up, so he doesn't need this. So, so you get $50 possibly, maybe a hundred off the grocery freeze. You're getting maybe 300 from property. Put it back, what else do you get, Terry? You got that gasoline tax. Remember, people are selling this in the press as a billion dollars. Sounds like a lot. Gasoline. If you fill up your car, Terry, what do you got? 15 gallons? You got, you're saving two cents off each 
gallon, that's 30 cents. 30 cents on a fill-up. Take it to the bank, Jeff. Take it to the bank. That's a... Thir and this is the thing, cents. folks. You know, this is where... Cents. folk. The, uh, what did you I mean, say? Really, folks. 30 effing cents. Yeah. Is okay. that 30 cents... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, the thing is, this is the point that I'm trying to make here, that yes. we are, folks, giving you some of the details. The governor wants to give you the headlines. The governor is going to say, uh, I am having saving you money on groceries, on property taxes, on gasoline, on fees, and you know, having a waiver on the licensing fees. Well, it might be for one year, uh, but that's not the uh, that's not what's going to be continuing on. The governor is also saying, "I'm going to be paying down your pensions and saving the state billions of dollars." Let's listen. Each year I've served as governor, our state has met its pension payment obligations. But when we are able, I think we ought to do more than just pay the minimum. That's why I propose making not only our minimum pension payment this year, but also an additional half a billion dollars. If approved by the General Assembly, this will be the first time since the beginning of 1994's pension funding ramp that we will reduce our pension debt by more than our required contribution. I'm asking Democrats and Republicans to work together with me to get this done because it will save taxpayers $1.8 billion in interest payments over the coming years. So that's what the governor is saying, that we're going to put $500 million more in on top of the over $9 billion pension payment, and that $500 million will, over time, save $1.8 billion. Uh, that's all well and good. Uh, it's not, you know, it's something that would be nice if we could get a handle, but that's not ultimately making the kind of systemic changes, the critics would argue, to the overall system that need to be made to bring it into balance where it can be uh, paid. And as I said earlier, we showed earlier, we're already as a state spending as much on pension payments annually uh, as we are on K-12 education and those pension payments will be going up and continuing to crowd out other spending. What the governor didn't tell you, what he neglected to tell you, where does those pension benefits, where does that, that, why is the governor able to brag about how well he did this year in pensions, okay? Not just in that $500 million, as he brags elsewhere. Because what happened this year? If you follow the market, as Terry Martin does, you know, the 2019 was kind of a so-so year. I think the, the pension pay, pension assets, I think, went up somewhere in the 5 to 10% range. And that's, that's good, and, but it's, and it's good, but it's not extraordinary. What happened in 2020 comes down to the 0 to 5% range. What happened, Terry, in 2021? What happened, we only guess, or do you know, Terry, what was the rate of return of pension asset investments in Illinois? in 2021. Would you like to venture? I don't know on the pension. I can tell you the S&P went up, as I recall, about 26 percent. It set a right, record right. Uh, for coming back. Of course, it was coming back from the trough of uh, 2020. So uh, but they don't put all the pension funds into the S&P 500. You know, right. they have no but, but in Illinois went up. It, it followed that. They did. They did well. A portion well is that. So you would expect it to be 25 percent. Right. Something like that. That happens like once every 30 years. Right? Well, again, that was a, that was an all-time record, you know, that the S&P went up last year. So you can't Terry, count on that. Terry, next year, which won't be an election year, will it happen again? Will the governor be touting, oh, I got $500 million extra to put in? Ain't no way it happening, okay? Because he's not doing the reforms, and he can't bet on that rate of return. Truth or fiction. They did say they're going to continue the uh, buyout program. I mean, we can't go over, you know, this budget yeah, detail. Right. You can't go into every detail. But we're trying to give you some uh, some specific information so that you, the viewer, can have a handle what on the budget. What was the benefit of the buyout program this year? And what will they get next year? I don't, I don't have the breakdown. The point is, though, we're going we're gonna to save money in the long run if we buy out the uh, pension of the uh, people retiring. Terry, Terry, did the governor, do you have a soundbite of him saying 
that when he came in, people in Illinois were paying a, get, a tax per gallon of 50 cents. He brought it up to 78 percent. 78 cents a gallon. We no, no, the big, state, the state tax, big. the state tax is uh, 38 cents a gallon. But I'm saying the total taxes being paid per gallon went from 50 cents, uh, Illinois is paying, to 78 cents. That's almost a, that's a 60 percent increase. Well, you didn't tell me that. look, to be fair, let's not figure what the feds are doing or let's, let's just keep it on what the state did. The state doubled their gas tax, so they went up 100 percent. The state's so control people, went up 100 percent from 19 to 38. Terry, Terry, when people pay, yes, you're talking about the increment. I'm That's saying if we're going to be talking about what the governor's doing, which is what we're talking about, let's talk about what the governor's policies doubled did. The they doubled, doubled the tax. The 38 cents. He also he tried to have a that. progressive tax, and that would have taxed more people. I mean, you have a sound bite of the governor. Not of the governor, no. I mean, it was a 50-minute. We can only we post them Jeff, I want to, excuse me, I want to get to the Republicans because we're running out of time. I want to get them in. Let's listen to Representative Chris Boss and what he said. This budget is nothing more than an election year gimmick that does nothing to address the structural issues that have held Illinois back for decades. Our state revenues are decreasing while there is $2.5 in new spending. He hasn't addressed what's caused the state's massive pension liability to continue, and he is proposing a one-time so-called property tax relief without any structural reforms to address the root problem. This is not a long-term solution. And that was uh, Representative Boss. Before we get carried away, let's go ahead and listen to what Representative Tom Demmer uh, had to say as well. And basically, they're saying the governor's taking all this credit for doing things when basically, as we've said, it's, it's really the result of all this money coming in from the feds that we've been able to put off the uh, col financial collapse of the state. But keep in mind that this is the same person who just a year and a half ago was spending a fortune of his own money trying to convince Illinois voters to approve a $3 billion tax increase. And he followed that up by proposing over a billion dollars in tax increases on Illinois businesses. Governor Pritzker at his core is supports increased taxes, higher government spending, and has used a avalanche of cash from the federal government to bail out budgets year after year. What we need to address are some of the uh, driving pressures that have uh, continued to make our state budgeting a challenge. And we need common sense, bipartisan solutions to come together to put Illinois on a more stable financial footing for years to come. So that was Representative Tom Demmer of uh, so Dixon. What Demmer and Boss are doing there for the Republicans are teeing it up for some, perhaps all, of the GOP governor candidates and we now have five who are opposing the governor. In, well, the first is a primary on June 28th among the five GOP governor candidates. And then there's a, the general election of that winner in November against Governor Pritzker. And what Boss and Demmer are reminding people here is that, hey, just a year ago, the governor was saying, oh, we must have a new tax. We need billions and billions. We're in terrible shape. And now, now that he's running for re-election, all is good. We have a balanced budget, he says. We have a surplus. I don't even know if we have that. We'll talk about that maybe next week. We haven't seen a lot. His of claim is this fiscal year that ends yeah, on at the end of June is a $1.7 billion surplus. What they're saying there, it's what we've been saying, this is all the bailout. There aren't any reforms. There really isn't any property tax reform. There isn't any education reform. There isn't any Medicaid reform no structural reforms. <clears throat> he can't do that. And, and Terry, Terry, just, okay, so that's what they're saying. What he didn't talk about, he didn't talk about much <coughs> how safe he made the state of Illinois from his lockdowns. Well, and this- and You know why he didn't do that? You know why, Terry? Because there's a Johns Hopkins study. Those are not carny barkers. They just came out with a, a, an aggregation of studies showing that Basically, people who've now looked at this say lockdowns and shutdowns are ineffective. They don't even, they don't do I, anything. I, I think the number was 0.2% It made difference. Right. It was virtually, this whole lockdown virtually does nothing. And 
for all these mandates about wearing your mask and we still walk in the stores and you got to wear a mask they've yeah. come out and saying the masks don't do anything right. unless you're wearing like an i-90 or an n95 mask these cloth masks that we're all wearing do nothing so, but there, now that he's got the data out, now that he's got the science, you'd think he'd come out and say, I'm removing, because he has a mandate on pe pe kids wearing masks in schools. So unnecessary. Now that he's found out, unless we're going to give out the kids N95s, take them off. I'm, I'm the governor. I'm Pritzker. I follow the And by the way, and Jeff, it's not like we're living in a, mm -hmm. a different world here. We have other states where they're doing this. You know, Illinois always acts as if we're, we're, we're going to ignore all the data mm -hmm. and what's going on in other states. How many states, 14 states that have a mask mandate? The great majority don't. Don't. It's not just the South, or the Republican states. The great majority no longer have these mask mandates. They're removing them from the restaurant bar things that they had. The world is changing. Is this governor? Because he might have to admit he made a mistake. Look, aside from the budget, this was also the state of the state. And what we didn't hear is the rising crime in across the state. We didn't hear anything about what we're going to be doing to get a handle on the rising crime. But you we, did. No, we didn't hear about how we're going to have regulation relief so, so we don't have these businesses fleeing the state. The governor said, and you can find a soundbite if you looked hard enough, that talked about, uh, you know, violence interruption programs and going from 100 million to 200 million to 700 million. But you didn't hear the word prosecution. Yeah. You didn't say we're going to tell the ask. He's going to use the bully pulpit of the governor to go to state's attorney Kim Fox and say, could you please start prosecuting violent crime? And he didn't say that there may be a few other of the 102 counties that are not having their state's attorneys prosecute crime. And we didn't hear him say anything about to Chief Judge Evans, could you maybe do what you can to not let these people out on bail when you have evidence and data that they are dangerous, uh, they're career criminals, and they're likely to repeat. We didn't hear that. Let's do this. We have two minutes left. Let's talk a little bit about the political fallout. We are in an election year, as we noted. There's uh, five candidates on the Republican side at this point. Uh, how does this shake out, you think, for uh, the governor's race? Well, you know, we've had Bailey there, Senator Bailey. We've had uh, Jesse Sullivan. We've had um, Paul Schimpf, and we've had Gary Rabon. And they were joined in the last week or two by Richard Irvin, Mayor Richard Irvin from Aurora. And it's speculated still because he hasn't said that he, that Ken Griffin will be coming in big time and supporting. Ken Griffin said he's coming in big time and he'll do whatever he has to do. Let me bring up real quick. This is uh, Richard Irvin, the uh, mayor of Aurora, black Republican. Uh, some people think, and certainly the top tier, because of the money from uh, uh, coming into the party from uh, dropped his name. He, has, he, has a, he had 1.2 million come in, but not from Griffin, from other wealthy, from other more, sources, mm -hmm. well known donors like Betsy Swa and. Have we ever uh, nailed down that uh, Ken Griffin is going to be putting 300 million in, or how much? We've heard those numbers, and he's basically said he will do that. He just hasn't yet declared that he will do it on behalf of Richard Irvin in the primary. The speculation is he will. We'll probably hear more about that in the next few weeks. But now, setting the stage. One, one minute, I'd like to know how much of this, the finances of the state are gonna resonate as a campaign, or do you think it's going to be COVID and crime primarily? Well, it's gonna be a lot. Look, it's, it's a lot on inflation, national issue, city issue. How closely aligned is this governor and perhaps responsible for supporting a president who's responsible for 7% CPI? We'll leave it there. Uh, Thanks. We'll pay attention, folks. Let us know what's important to you.